All right, I guess we're going to discuss a little, little brief thing about DMT. DMT is dimethyltryptamine. It is secreted from your pineal gland in your brain. What's, it's what makes you dream. It, uh, it's definitely, it's found in every single living thing, period, point blank, that's still alive. And, you know, it's like when you smoke it, you smoke it till you black out. You don't smoke it till you're just tripping. And it'll absolutely change reality entirely. Like your perspective on everything will radically change. It's, um, it definitely changed my life so incredibly, like radically, that I ended up being some hippie that moved out to Kalalau, Kauai, you know what I mean? And, uh, it's really like when when you smoke it it's a catalyst it doesn't it's not like it's an actual drug that gets you high it's, it it makes you secrete more and more of the dmt that's already in your head you know what i mean so that's why you just radically blast off and you feel a massive fucking intense energy like going on in your head a frequency that starts out like a and it ends up being like <laughs> rock in your world bro and uh, it really does make you leave your body. Like your spirit, you know, once you pass that part and you're, you feel like your head fucking explodes. And when it explodes, that's when you know your spirit has left your body. And literally, like I've had different experiences to where like my mind was just flying through the cosmos, like looking at all these little slideshow fucking realities, choosing which one I want to, you know, go into for however long I want, you know, like pop into this reality and see something, get bored, start flying through space again, choose another one, and uh, it's crazy because, you know, what comes to you is what comes to you, you know, I've had, you know, whatever you want to call them, deities, uh, talk to me, and they never actually speak to you, like they never move their lips and talk, it's, like tele it's telepathic, yeah, they all just beam so much mass amounts of data into your head that it's overwhelming and after you you know you come back to you really don't remember shit until a day or two later maybe even further than that dude i've had it to where i've smoked dmt and had like a great great revolutionary experience didn't remember a fucking thing and all of a sudden two weeks later i was like holy shit you know is that because, like, uh, all the thoughts come in faster than you could just talk to somebody? Yeah. Like a high frequency. It's too overwhelming. As yeah. well as, you know, like, when you come back to your body, it's, like, it's such a radically different experience that it's hard to even remember how you viewed it. You, you know what I mean? Stage. Like, dude, the yeah. first time I even smoked it, well, it was the second time I smoked it, right? I opened my eyes and looked over, and I literally yeah, saw, like, every single thing that was about to happen within a two minute span i saw everything as a painting like a Whoa. picture like i saw like blocky little images of someone reaching over to grab something and like blocky little images of them giving it to someone and i could have literally said like you're about to give that lighter to someone and, like, you could tell and the I was future right, bro like, what the yeah fuck? Like, dude seriously? in the past you could see exactly what people just did or about to do yeah. and what they're doing and you can differentiate like imagine That's like a body, trail dude. like a person a little bit transparent and that's what the future person would be doing, right? But you can tell the solid, solid person is where they're at at the moment. So you can tell what they're actually about to do, dude. It's, it's incredible, man. Huge difference, man. It's like, I've, I've definitely eaten a shitload of acid when I was younger, you know, definitely taken a lot of mushrooms, but never, never have I experienced anything like DMT. And it's, you know, it it opens your eyes and makes you realize that at any given point, really, if you, if, like, let's say you were to go up in the valley, right, for a couple of days, and just sit there and meditate. Meditate as long as you can, as pure as you can. Focus only on your breathing at first. And once you literally get all of your own thoughts out of your head and anything that you know, just forget about it. Yeah, and be open. That's when different fragments of reality will start coming into your consciousness and you start seeing things and you know once you get to that level it becomes easier for you to actually leave your body because then you start yeah. realizing like oh shit You're i'm not a conscious pushing your own shit light. out you know yeah, yeah. it's uh, it's amazing like what you know the, the most profound emt experience i did have is that you know beautiful things were happening it's a long story but you know beautiful things were happening and all of a sudden it got really bad like really like scary dude there's this like little dot i was in this nothingness right and you know something beautiful was going on and this, this crazy spiral of death was coming at me like as it opened up and got bigger and bigger 
there were skulls in it and like these little demons dancing around with severed heads and eyes and like you know but as soon as I was thinking like this is getting kind of fucked up but let's see where it goes right after I thought that dude this angel this purple skinned angel came from this big light behind me up above and just hugged me and as soon as she did dude all my muscles just gave out and I felt such euphoria like I thought I peed myself but I guess I didn't you know later I, I checked <laughs> but Dude, it was really honestly the first time in my life I felt actual love, dude. And it was like the most beautiful thing in the world. Absolutely yeah. most beautiful thing. And even though she didn't actually say anything to me, I felt like, dude, she was just like flushing information into my head from behind. And when I came to and my buddies were asking me, what did you see? What happened? I was like, the only thing I could say is that, dude, I'm, we just, I just got reassured that we are eternal. There's nothing to fear. And fear is the only thing that fucking traps you into a bad you know bad thought process and like it makes bad, bad things happen to you you have like the law of attraction exactly so the more you fear something the more you're going to create it you know like people are told to fear hell oh you don't want to go to hell man and Dude, you know you want to be in heaven and they put it into your fucking head they build hell into your head when literally you shouldn't even think about it whatsoever Reality is just weird, man. Reality is insane. It is what it is, and there's infinite possibilities within it. So really, like, really, the the, the evil that people you know see and whatnot and fear, they dwell in it and they live in it because they fear it. And you know, honestly, some of them submit to it and serve it so that you know, out of their fear of like not wanting to be consumed by it, you know. <laughs> Fear is a horrible disease, man. It, yes. Once you let it in your body, it, it, it dwells and it spreads, dude. It spreads to where you're afraid of every fucking thing, dude. There's people that are like, like a fire. afraid to even um even go out of the front door, man. The more you let go of fear, the more awesome things are gonna come into your life. Like, dude, I honestly like I, I came to Kauai one time when I was 16 because my dad was getting married, dude, and I realized that it's the coolest place on earth, right? So, you know, after, like, honestly, this year is the first time I even explored my own consciousness. Yeah. I had no fucking clue. I wasn't a spiritual person whatsoever my whole life. Yeah. But after I smoked DMT, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, um, you know, after, like, I had this great job, right? I fucking, you know, I had the law of attraction, that the documentary, The Secret. Yeah, That's yeah, the I've seen thing, that. <laughs> first thing that I ever, like, Read you know, last it. year, I was just like, whoa, wait, what? Sense. And, you, you know, noticed I started it applying it. Yeah, because, dude, I used to fucking, like, my life honestly really got shitty right before it because, you know, I used to sell a lot of drugs and whatnot, and I ended up getting fucked over. Like, believe it or not, this dude that I bailed out of jail $500 for his fucking birthday, like, not only did he not pay me back, but he stole, like, two grand from me and whatnot, and I ended up losing the two apartments that I had, this and that, and, you know, everything was just bad, and I realized after, re you know, reading about the Law of Attraction that... It's because of myself, bro. It's, I can only blame myself. Stress really brings stressful situations. Yeah. And, um, you know, once I was homeless and whatnot for a little while, I just started being positive. Like, no matter how shitty things got, man, I started being positive. And guess great, what? I found dude. the best job I've ever had in my life. Yeah. Made like 1200 to $1,500 a week, wow. you know? And and it's crazy how, you know, it's I, fuck, I barely made it here, bro. Like, I... You know, yeah. right when I wanted to come to Kauai, right when I knew that, like, I want to come to Kauai, I got laid off and, you know, lost, lost yet again another apartment. I got evicted. I fucking still owe, like, $2,400 to him. But now you're living out here with no money. Man. Absolutely no money, and I've yeah, never been great. happier, bro. I've never been that's happier awesome, in my dude. life, man. When you come out on a spiritual journey and really try to, you know, learn yourself and whatnot, you have to give up everything that you care about. Because... You have to keep all of your energy to yourself, really, for to even help other people. Because until you really get to that point you need to be, you're no profit, you know. So to actually like put your all of your energy into these non these physical things, you know, like let's say your grandpa gives you a necklace that you cherish for years and whatnot. Yeah, it's cool, you know, but you're wasting energy, bro. You were putting your energy into that physical object that absolutely is not going to do anything positive with your energy. So until you, you know, give everything away, throw your life away. You know, I came out here with zero fucking dollars, man. I spent my last two dollars in Los Angeles airport. Yeah. But I made it here. 
and I'm thriving. You know, right. <laughs> it's awesome, man. It's, it's, all because because of, uh, <laughs> it's all because of just really opening yourself up. Like, you know, I started being more open and to different things, this and that, and then DMT found its way to me, and I was like, I've heard heard of it before, but I have no clue. I didn't even know it was a hallucinogen. A couple of my dreams, I've had like four or five dreams about being in Kauai, and you know, my last DMT session, you know, smoking, I at the end of it, you know, this little serpent or whatever that was throughout my my journey flipped me over, and I know what it was, bro. It was an ayahuasca journey that I'm going to have here. I absolutely know 100%. Because he said, do you remember this? And flipped me over on my hands and knees and I barfed my brains out. But when I did, dude, it cleaned my system out so good that, like, I quit smoking cigarettes finally. And I've been smoking since I was eight. Bro, like, so I've, I've never really been able to quit it until right then and there. I was like, bro, I'm done with it. I'm clean. You know, it, uh, it renewed my body. And I knew exactly what it was, bro. It was like this little ayahuasca uh, vision that I had, you know. And I know for sure it was here because when I got flipped over by the serpent, I was in the in the woods here, you know, and I've yeah, already actually like seen this. the spot that I was. What the fuck? It's beautiful, That's man. That's crazy, dude. And then I've had, you know, as I said, I've had other dreams, man. And I've even had the deja vu moments where me yeah. and my buddies that were here, when we started coming down in the valley, it was cool, bro, because, like, I moved these tree branches out of the way and the sunlight came through it, and my buddy said the same exact thing that I heard in my dream. And, like, it just happened, and I was like, oh, I'm so happy I'm finally here, man. Yeah, it's crazy. It was really hard getting here, man, because it would have been nice if I would have had money, you know, got my ticket and whatever, but I ended, ended up having to be homeless yet again and barely made it here, man. Barely. It's better than being in the corporate world. Absolutely, man. Fuck <laughs> Fuck society, dude. Fuck society. I'd rather be out here and work my ass off for food and yeah. whatnot. And I've definitely been doing so, man. It's it's hard work out here, it really is, bro. And uh, it's hard to walk around barefoot everywhere. This is this I was fucked up for the feet. I finally put on my shoes today because I got holes all up in my foot that I want to let dry up and heal. Everyone, go to Cal Al Valley. Yeah, everybody that There's really wants to be a free there. person, man. Yeah. You gotta hike like 11 miles to get here. If you don't get picked up, you gotta hike 20. <laughs> but it's a uh, yeah, great documentary, man. Y'all gonna see some good stuff. Aloha. <laughs>